Welcome back to our city. And for the second half of this show, I am pleased to be joined by Miss Michelle Rodriguez, who is a dance instructor for the program here in the city of Elizabeth at the Racquet Club. Michelle, welcome to the program. Hello, Mayor. How are you? You've been on before. Yes. <laughs> now, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I have been doing this for 16 years. But you danced since you were... Oh, so that was like four or five. You started dancing. Yes. And you have your own studio or anything, or just... Just with the program. Just with the program. Yeah. Now, this was your idea, actually. You brought it to us. Yes. <laughs> 60, what, what, well, I was like 17. <laughs> you were 17. So you're giving away your age. I am. People are going to say 17. Yeah, they're, gonna, yeah, they're doing the math three, now. Three, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, Michelle, you brought this program to us 16 years yes. ago. And we start off with a handful of girls. Yeah, we had about 25 girls, and we started off at the Racket Club, uh, the old Racket Club. And, um, you know, it was, it was a wonderful experience. The program quickly grew. Um, by year three, we're already at 150 to 200 students. And that's probably capacity, right? Two, yeah, you can't 200. Do much more than 200. No, 200. Now, you don't do this alone either, Michelle. No. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the helpers. Well, it takes a village to run a, a program this big. And so we have Miss Melissa, who's my sister. We have Miss Daniela and Miss Cindy. Um, and then we have all of the parents who are a great support system. And of course, everybody at the Department of Recreation who is always. So I stopped in to see the program the other day uh, <laughs> as I go around to some of these play camps during the summer. And uh, I saw the young girls in the, in the, they were having pajama day. Yes. So they were thrilled to just hang out in their pajamas. Yeah. One girl was laying down and they were, <laughs> they were having a snack. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they just, Cindy and, uh, and Danielle. Danielle were there. Yes. So. They have a good time. The summer program really helps us build relationships with the girls, especially the older girls, because the summer camp is from ages 10 to 17, and the girls get to go there. We work on ballet, we work on hip-hop, and a bunch of different other styles of dance throughout the, throughout the day, and they also get to just be silly. We have crazy hair day, um, pajama day, crazy like socks, like just kind of have fun with them and just have a good time and, and develop those bonds. So uh, did Danielle or Cindy come through the program? Yes, they did. They both did. Both of them. And now they're in Instructors. Yes. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. And, and uh, it's trying to make me feel a little old, but that's okay. I was just gonna say, well, <laughs> people are doing the math again, Michelle. They're, they're, they're adding up here. So um, when when do they meet during the summer? What is, what is the timing of uh, it? The program starts from 1030 to 330, Monday through Friday. And when's the winter program? The winter program starts now up in, in mid-September, and we go from September to June. And we have a big recital in June, yes. right? Yes. Yes. We have a huge recital. <laughs> I, pulling that off is tough. Yes, we have two shows um, because the program is so big that they don't, you know, we can't just fit it all in one. So we have two shows. The morning show is usually the younger girls, and then the evening show is the older students. So during the winter program, do you do crazy hair day and sock day and no. pajama day and all that? You know, it's more geared towards. <laughs> it's more geared towards focus and discipline and learning the style and technique needed to be productive in the show. So do you actually recruit the students or do they just come to you now? They just come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have a, a really long like, um, waiting list process because unfortunately since we are at max capacity, uh, spacing is, is limited and so what we do is we every year we take new students and we try to fill up every class so every age group we make our maximum capacity is 25 students per group. So we try to split them up so that each class is at 25 uh, students. And then the younger girls, we try to keep our max at 15 because they require more attention. And what's the youngest? The youngest is three. So we have three-year-old girls who we're training. And, yeah, and young men. We have some boys, too, yes, I, I noticed at the boys. recital. Yeah. And how do they deal with that? Uh, they, they have a good time. They, yeah. they, they just they have a good time, and they laugh, and, and they enjoy it. Do they, do they like to dance? Or they, yeah. Do, yeah. Uh -huh. Most of them have a, like, they have a great time, and, and the older ones, they've been with us for a long time. Now they're like, I'm in a class full of girls. This is great. This is great, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what they figure, right? So, um, so we have 200 students involved, and the youngest are three. Mm -hmm. what, what age group is, probably has the most? Is Probably between six and seven but then we also have a large amount of older students so between 13 and 17 we have a large group of those and so, at 17 you age out of the program yeah once you graduate high school then you can always come back and visit but right. once you're a senior we you know we expect them to continue their education or further their development and so as now young adults their priorities so are I, I would guess if you're starting at three and you're working there's a tail off but there's not a lot of seven, right? They find other things to do. Or? Sometimes they do. Uh, sometimes they'll take some time off, and they'll, you know, they'll do soccer or, you know, softball or theater, and then, you know, they'll come back, um, or they don't. And either way, they always come back and visit and say hello and and So come you and mentioned hang out. some different types of dancing. You're yes. doing. You're doing hip hop. 
Well, oh, that's in the summer only. It's in the summer yeah. only. You don't do hip hop, hip hop in there. No, in the no. in our regular season, we focus on ballet, uh, tap, and flamenco. Okay, so. so do you do focus on those three in the summer, or just more um, hip hop? And ballet, more free we focus style? more like ballet, lyrical, modern, uh, more like what the student population's into. So if students have a particular interest that summer, then we really try to uh, gear it towards their area. So what is your interest. personal favorite machine? Ballet. It is. <laughs> yeah, hands down. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and so you much prefer doing a ballet? Oh, I rather I could teach ballet all day long and have no problem. With really? It. Yeah. Really, you have the passion. Yeah, for that. I, it's just. I love classical music, and it's it's great. <laughs> and and it's, your sister and Danielle and Cindy, do they have a preference? You know? Yes, my sister's preference has always been flamenco. It's it's you know it's the, the style that she's mostly carried with. Um, Cindy also loves ballet. Um, Miss Daniela loves tap. So everyone has kind of like their their niche. niche. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the preparation into the annual dance recital, I enjoy going to yes. it. And the, the preparation into the annual dance recital, I, it has to be, when does it start? April, May, or even before that? Oh, we start in September. <laughs> so as soon as the students get there, mm -hmm. you're gearing up for the yeah, recital. Before and they even walk in, I already have a theme in mind. We're already looking up songs. We're already looking up costume ideas, scenery, uh, like backgrounds, um, different ideas for transitions between numbers, kind of what vision do we see for each age group kind of what technique or skill is going to be our focus what themes do you how do you how do you come up with the themes well, you, after 16 years are you, have you repeated any no no <laughs> no but wow. I'm, 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 this year's a little tough but i really think i have i'm down to two right now <laughs> but we last year was pirates. Is the theme the same for everybody yes it is so the show was like so like this year our theme was pirates so every show every kind of style of dance had some kind of like pirate theme or pirate connection or something and then the year before that we had circus um we had night at the movies um 80s disco <sighs> now did you get involved in dance did your mother push you into dance or did you just want to do it when you were a young girl uh, my cousin started it and then she was like oh you want to check out these classes i mean i was really little so i don't really remember too much i just Showed I've up. Always, I've always when been you were doing little. it, so I don't know. Yeah. And so you, your mother helps you with the recitals and everything. Oh, yeah. She's always there backstage running and, and telling the girls all the stuff that she's heard for like years. And she's like, remember, no gum, hair's all back. She checks them out, nothing on their hands. Okay, you're ready. Go, hurry you're ready up. Go. Hurry <laughs> up. So um, the theme is chosen by you? Yes. Okay. And the other girls just. They kind of go along, whatever the theme is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, they, they, they tell me if they have any ideas, and then we discuss it, and, and we, you know, kind of. So the parents, um, do the parents view this as, I'm going to drop my daughter or son off for six hours or four hours and be done with it, or do some of the parents actually get involved in hoping yeah. their daughter or son progresses in the education of dance? We have a lot of parents that are very, very involved, and I would say that a lot of the older parents have been with us for a very long time are very much involved and I always tell them it's important for them no matter how old the children are that they stay um, and kind of just watch a little bit you know peek in through the window and, and constantly be enforcing their their passion and their love for dance because the point of, of, of them being in this program besides learning dance is to learn dedication to learn time management to learn how to be organized um, so that they can manage all the other avenues of life as they grow up into being professional adults and does that sink in uh, for a lot of them, yeah. Most of the students that have graduated from, from our program and have finished our program um, have gone on to go to college. One of them just graduated from NYU with her master's in counseling. Another one just graduated here from Kane with her, her master's in, in biology. Um, Miss Cindy and Miss Daniela currently are Kane students, and they um, are both. Um, Dan's, uh, Daniela wants to be a math teacher, and Cindy wants to be a speech pathologist. Um, so they all tend to, in one way, continue their education. Some of them have gone on to different programs like uh, nursing assistants or medical assistants, and some of them had continued to four-year colleges. Now, you're a brand-new mom. Do you think your child is going to get involved in dance? 
Ah, uh, yes. You do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> My son is going to have no choice. I'm going to, you know, start him off with something like tap and then see if he if he loves it, then I'm going to continue it. Um, but if it's not something that they're interested in, then I think it's important for you to find as a parent each individual student need or what they're interested in and, and develop that passion. So how do you deal with the little kid who walks on stage and says, oh, my God, what am I doing here and runs <laughs> off? There's got to be some kids that are afraid. Of even I mean, to walk out there in front of a couple of hundred people is tough. Yes. Um, it's a little intimidating. Usually you get to see uh, beforehand, knowing their personality, who's going to have a little more difficulty than others. And then on the side of the stage, we're always standing there. So if we can tell that a student is going to have difficulty Stop, once Stop, get back out there, kids. stage, we kind of put them next to us and we like coach them through it. Like, you've got this, smile. And then we tell them just to focus on us and then they get through the number. And so what about the kid that steals a show? With some, <laughs> there's, got, there's always a kid that go up there and ham it up type of thing, and right? Just, and just goes and, and thinks they're the, the spotlights all them. Uh, we just, usually that's the smaller ones. We just enjoy it and go with the flow. <laughs> so if anybody wants information about the dance program, what? They can uh, contact the Department of Recreation. Um, they have all of our information and um, they'll know all of our dates, our start time, our rating, our registration dates, uh, times, and hours. You know, every year when I go to the recital, I always talk about how you started this program <laughs> with a handful of girls. Yes. And now we're up to 200. Yes. And it's really difficult going over that because of capacity. Yes. The work you've done is phenomenal. You've Thank you. educated a lot of young people about dance <laughs> in the city, and I think it's terrific. It's, it's been my pleasure. It's been a wonderful experience. Well, thanks for joining <laughs> us on the show, and good luck with your newborn. Thank you. I want to thank Miss Michelle Rodriguez for joining us on the program talking about the dance program here in the city of Elizabeth at the Elmore Racquet Club and the first segment those guests Assemblywoman from this district Assemblywoman at Quijano and Linda Flores Tober talking about their program that hunger does not take a vacation so I hope you'll all stay with us for next week's show where we'll be back with another edition of Our City <music>